So before we get started with the technical details, we're going to skip ahead to price elasticity of supply just to talk about what are those factors that can affect supply elasticity. So here we're going to see that there are three uh, general categories. So we've got the feasibility and cost of storage, we've got substitutes in production, and then finally we've got a time period, uh, much the same as we saw with the factors of demand elasticity. So what exactly uh, do these all mean? Well, for the first one, uh, feasibility and cost of storage. Well, when a, a firm decides to uh, produce a particular quantity, they need to know how long that good is going to be able to stay on the shelf. Now, for most things like uh, uh, products, you know, it can just uh, sit there and it's not really going to make a difference. But there are examples uh, of particular goods that really can't stay on the shelf for very long. Like, what about the difference between fresh tomatoes and canned tomatoes? Well, fresh tomatoes tend to spoil very, very quickly. You really can't store them. So we're going to say here that uh, their supply is going to be very inelastic. You know, that's to say that uh, they're going to produce a certain number of tomatoes and they've got to get rid of them if they're starting to spoil. Versus, say, canned tomatoes, which can really like stay on the shelf for months or even years. In this case, we would see that the canned tomatoes would be more supply elastic because the firm can change the production of them more easily knowing that they can sit on the shelf if, if need be. With two, uh, we're going to look at uh, substitutes in production. So that's to say, uh, you know, th this uh, company is, is got a choice between producing one thing or another, and the easier it is for them to switch from producing, you know, good X to good Y, the more supply elastic that good will be. So one example of this might be a company that produces DVDs. You know, uh, they're going to put movies on these DVDs, and they want to know what exactly uh, they should make. Well, uh, here we're going to say that the supply will be very elastic, because the company can decide between, say, putting the new Batman movie on that DVD, or the new Spider-Man movie. You know, if they, if they see that uh, no one really wants the Spider-Man movie, because everyone's crazy about Batman instead, then we're going to say that it's going to be more sensitive to price. So, if that uh, price of the Spider-Man movie goes down, you know, it's going to be very easy for them to make those Batman movies instead, simply by putting a different movie on that DVD. Uh, for three, we're also going to have a time period. So, we're going to see this later on in the course, but this really relates to the difference between short run and long run. In the short run, each supplier can really only change the amount of labor that they employ. You know, uh, how many people are going to work uh, in their office, or, or how many people are going to work uh, you know, in the restaurant, for example. You know, they can hire on more people, or they can fire people if necessary. They can have people come in for an extra shift. All that can be changed in the short run. It's fairly, it's fairly easy to do that. But what's much harder is for them to invest in new machinery, or open up a new office, or uh, start up a new factory. In this case, we're going to say that, you know, capital, or these factories and machines and so on, are going to be uh, more supply inelastic. So that's to say, only when you extend the time period for very long, are they going to be able to change these, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the number of machines and so on. So the longer the time period, the more supply elastic that firm will be. Because once you go into the long run, they can change not only the labor, but also the capital uh, for their production. 